Thank you. Good evening, everyone. At 11 p.m. on May 3rd, my mother, who was 77 years old at the time, my sister-in-law, 13-year-old niece, five-year-old twin boy and girl, and two-year-old nephew were attacked by an evil and misguided Meite Hindu mob. They ran a few doors down to a Meite Hindu neighbor's house to hide in his dirty, dingy storehouse. There were so many mosquitoes, my mother says. The children were so good. They did not cry or make a noise. They huddled there for over three hours as mayhem continued around them. They heard the sounds of stones, sticks, rocks, cars and gas cylinders bursting into flames. Angry mobs had burnt their church, a Baptist church, earlier that evening and were attacking and burning their neighbors' houses and had turned to their house. They escaped with their lives and the clothes they were wearing while our beautiful family home was burned and looted. The mob even came back to burn the house again the next day on May 4th. To date, over 7,000 Kukizomi tribal homes have been burned and destroyed. The attack on my mother was the attack on Paiteveng in Imphal, India. In Dallas, Texas, where I live, it was 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon when my sister texted me, have you talked to mom? I had no idea. I had no idea this fight had been brewing for a while that our people had been fighting for our people, our lives, our lands. I'm ashamed to say that if my home had not been burnt that night, I might still not have been drawn into the, this fight. Today is the 19th of September, 2023. It has been 139 days since this crazy evil mob attacked my family home and my mother. They burnt and stole not just everything my family owned in that house, but all our books, our photo albums, our memories, our refuge and our peace of mind. It is now 76 years since India gained its independence and formed a fledgling nation, a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Every single day, I get madder and madder at the inaction and utter ineptitude of the Indian government and at the US and other Western governments and intergovernmental organizations for their inaction. I'm angry, frustrated, humiliated, and sad. In 139 days, over 6,500 complaints have been filed with the police. These complaints are a desperate plea by people following process and the laws of the land, while the government and the police itself are, are not following the rule of law and have instead allowed the rule of mob to run rampant like a virus in, in Manipur and throughout India. Over 300 plus people have been killed. The government of India does not acknowledge the full body count. Many bodies have not been returned to their families. Many women have been raped and gang raped. Over 360 churches have been burned and two synagogues. Over 60,000 people have been displaced. The Manipur State Police has allowed its arms and ammunitions to be looted by the Meite terrorists. The Chief Minister of Manipur openly sides with the Meite terrorists. No state, central or international aid has reached my people. The only aid we have received is from each other, which is our tribal way, and from many good people all over the world. Those are just statistics. These are real people who have been impacted. On the evening of May 3rd, Chingboy Paipi, who is a pastor's wife in Chicago, her elderly parents, both of whom are heart patients, had to hide in the dark, in the fields, in the open fields, along with her brother and her sister's families in Impal, because the same large Meite Hindu mob had burned the church just next to their house. They stayed there all night and managed to walk to an army camp in the morning. 
They stayed there for over a week before they were transported to safety by the Indian Army. On May 4th, Mrs. Gozavung, 57, a Manipur government officer and her son, Mr. Golal Sang, 27, were pulled out of their car by a Hindu mob of about 200 vigilantes and beaten to death. They were trying to get to safety to an army camp. Her daughter-in-law was beaten, had to be admitted to the ICU with multiple head injuries and fractured wrists and hands, fingers. Her daughter, sister, cousin, and a one-year-old grandson escaped with their lives after being sheltered by a Hindu family from the mob. They escaped in the trunk of their car after a day or two had passed. On May 4th, Mr. Vungzagin Valte, a Kukizomi BJP MLA, an advisor to the Chief Minister of Manipur, was beaten and left to die on his way back from a meeting with the Chief Minister. His security detail abandoned him and his driver at the hands of the mob. On May 5th, Florence Hang Xing and Olivia Chong Loi, two Kukizomi tribal Christian women working at a car wash in Imphal, were attacked, gagged, and locked in a room from 5 to 7 p.m. They were tortured and gang raped. When the room was finally opened after 7 p.m., they were dead, their bodies mutilated. The room was filled with a horrifying mixture of blood, flesh, and hair. On May 6th, Mrs. Tiandam Baipei, a 45-year-old widow and mother of two, was killed. Her head, hands, and legs chopped off. She was also burnt with her house. On June 4th, a seven-year-old Kukizomi boy, Tonsing, his mother, Mina, and her friend, Lydia, were burnt alive in an ambulance on their way to the hospital by the mob. The mob was led by Mira Paibi women. They thought they would be safe as the mother, Ton Singh's mother, Mina, is a Meite woman. On June 10th, Mrs. Dimkohoi, 65, was shot dead while she was praying inside her village church. She was among the three shot by Meite militants wearing Manipur police uniforms and armored vehicles, in armored vehicles. On July 2nd, Mr. David Thiek Mar, 30 years old, one of, was one of three people captured. His two friends were released, but because he belongs to the Mar tribe, which is one of the tribes under the Kuki umbrella, he was tortured and beheaded. His hands and legs were chopped off. His head was displayed on a bamboo fence. His body parts were thrown into a burning building. The killers posted a video of the se severed head on social media with a voice in the background commenting, this is the face of a cookie. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. We've been trying to catch you people for a long time. The bo voice ended with an expletive. On July 6th, Mrs. Don Ngai Ching, 62, was shot and killed outside a school in Imphal. She was mentally ill often seen wandering the streets of Imphal, and had refused to leave Imphal feeling she was safe. She was not. On July 19th, a video surfaced of two Kukizomi women being paraded naked, molested, and gang raped on May 4th by Meite mob. These women and their families had run to the police for refuge, but the police handed them over to the mob. The young brother of one woman was beaten to death while trying to protect his sister. The husband of the other woman is an Indian army officer. My name is Florence Nyang Hoilun Lo. I'm a daughter of the Guite clan. The Guite clan belongs to the Paite tribe. The Paite are one of the Zo community tribes, the ones they're calling Kuki. We are Zo, Kuki, Tado, Paite, Mar, Gangte, Baipe, Simte, and a few more tribes. We ask for peace and justice and to be allowed to practice our religion and our customs without persecution. We ask for our right to self-determination and self-governance without fear of mob vigilantism 
or discrimination and attacks from our own government officials. We are so united. Thank you, Wissam.